In consequence of the recent discussions and debate on social media, I thought I would take the opportunity today to discuss our pending right of entry bylaw. First and foremost, however, I would like to be very clear that I do apologize on behalf of the town for the word dwelling to be included in land definition. I don't know how the error of dwelling got included, but once again, it has been removed. I would like to further take an opportunity here today to talk about the history of enforcement in Carlton Place, our existing policies, and how we got to where we are today. The power for, of entry for inspections. Council undertook and passed a property standards bylaw in 2020, which provided access in accordance with section 15 of the Building Code Act. Our existing property standards bylaw is dated from 2008. For other bylaws, the province of Ontario in 2006 legislated section 436 that a municipal council has the power to pass bylaws allowing inspections. We have some of the strictest policies in place to ensure residents' rights are not infringed. Why update the 2000 version of the property standards bylaw? Well, our current property, as I mentioned, 2008, and it needs newer amendments. The town is experiencing significant growth, which we've all seen with multiple multi-units, condos, etc. The property standards provide standards for maintenance and occupancy and helps tenants and neighbours with absentee landlords. Proposed changes to the bylaw are intended to close loopholes, clarify and tighten up language, all of which had previously been challenged on numerous occasions. We live in a world of litigation and we must balance residents' rights from liability and citizens' private rights. The reasons for the right of entry bylaw. If there is no right of entry bylaw, officers, municipal bylaw officers, cannot enter on any private property for the purpose of investigating a complaint or doing an inspection. It's important to note that this bylaw will not allow entry into any place used as a dwelling. I really wish to reinforce this is independent of dwellings. Dwellings may only be entered with a search warrant or with the permission of the occupier as discussed in Section 6 of the draft bylaw. The Municipal Act, as legislated by the Province of Ontario in 2006, under Section 436 again, a municipality has the power to pass bylaws providing that the municipality may enter on land at any reasonable time for the purpose of carrying out an inspection to determine whether or not the following are be complied with. And number one, a bylaw of the municipality passed under the Municipality Act. Why the need for an additional RTE bylaw? We have the following standalone bylaws without reference to the Municipal Act, Section 436, that need to be updated. These bylaws on our books now are independent of the Property Standards and Building Code bylaws. Without the RTE, take for example a pool bylaw. Inspector would not be allowed to go into a backyard for the sake of an example of an insecure fence that could expose the child to be uh, caught and, and unfortunately maybe drown in the pool. Maybe the owners are away for the weekend. Denied right to inspect. Take the watering bylaw. In July of 2020, we had a significant drought in the town of Carlton Place, and we needed to implement the watering bylaw. Without the right to enter, we could not manage, correct, or fix excessive watering. Maybe a neighbor's gone away once again for a long weekend, left a sprinkler on the backyard. We have no ability, no right, and cannot enter that property without the right to enter. In July, also, I make reference in that we almost hit our maximum of water pressure due to excessive watering and the drought, a combination of the both. If we had experienced a fire in July of 2020, we may not have had enough water pressure to put out the fire. Animal control bylaw. If we do not have the right to enter for our animal control, they cannot go into a backyard. They cannot go into a backyard with dogs barking. 
They cannot go in the backyard should there be a vicious dog on the loose or about to get it loose on the health and safety of residents. Waste collection by law, we're not allowed to correct that issue without the right to enter as per the requirements of the provincial law. But given an opportunity to put in perspective the amount of work and the number of complaints and issues and charges we have undertaken to date in 2020, as you can see from the chart, our bylaw enforcement are very busy. But if you quickly notice, no charges laid except for one example under waste collection. And I don't have the details on that. I can honestly say I don't know how many of these issues or warnings, etc., we would have been able to issue if we did not have the right to enter. People say if you have a right to enter for any of these reasons, as you were highlighted in, in our bylaw, go get a search warrant. Well, that's valid and it's a uh, valid comment. Significant increase in time and staff and paperwork, etc. But you know, could be accommodated with probably, I would suspect, incremental resources. The court bag backlog, the provincial laws are, you know, that's their priority, not municipal. If you go to a justice of the peace, they'll deny the warrant and say the municipal council has the right and authority to grant access. Which leads us to where we're at is the discussion and the vote tomorrow on the right to enter. But I thought it was important today to at least highlight some of the consequences should we not have that ability for our bylaw enforcement officers. Thank you for listening and look forward to hearing and listening for any other further clarification you may need. Thank you much.